Thank you for joining the Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener, radio host, national pastor, author, and speaker for Sundays with Dr. Sean. Hold on tight. Here comes the truth. Well, there you have it. There you have it. You have the real agenda now. No police, no peace. No police, no peace. That's what they're saying. That's what the Democrat mayors, Democrat leaders, alleged leaders, elected officials in Democrat cities are saying. That's what they're saying. That's the reality. I wonder if you have anything to say. Who is who is speaking for you? Have you asked yourself that? What is it about me that I don't get a voice? You well, you have a voice. You have, you're you have white privilege. White privilege. You got the white privilege, and that's that's what you have. The left, predictably and successfully deploys Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals. His strategy, Saul Alinsky's strategy, unchecked. Unchecked? What's their goal? What's their goal? You you have to know what the goal is. You at some point have to say, as a thinking, tax-paying, law-abiding citizen, what's the goal? It's anarchy. I'm tired of being assumed to be a racist, by the way, just because of the skin I was born in. Right? I'm born in this skin. Now, I get real, real dark. This is nothing. This is about one-third, maybe one-quarter of the darkness I get if I let myself be in the sun. But I'm a white guy. I was born a white guy. I didn't choose it. I'm not mad that I did. I got no better deal out of it. My growing up wasn't easy. Automatic assumption is every black person that grows up has it hard and every white person that grows up has it easy. And they call that white privilege. You know what I'm going to tell you something else I'm tired of? And I'm a pastor, so I'm saying this. I'm not saying this to pastors. Pastors, if you want to listen, great. If you don't want to listen, that's fine with me too. I am tired of pastors across America hinting during their very well-crafted sermons that there's a hidden undercurrent of subconscious racism, institutional and systematic racism, and and a presence of unjust people in their congregations just because their skin is also white. That is, by definition, racism. That is racism. Racism. Look, I don't need a sermon telling me I need to search my soul and my faith. I don't need to pray and ask God to reveal any hidden sin of racism in me. I do that daily. I ask him to reveal all my hurts and habits and hang-ups. But racism isn't one of them. And to assume that a crowd of white people, predominantly white people, are racist just because they're white people, gotta be, gotta be in a crowd, big crowd of people. Gotta be some racists up in there. Tired of it. I'm, I'm sick to death of it. Stop insinuating that the congregation has to include racism because it's mostly white. Because I'm going to tell you something real important here, pastors all across the nation trying to knit together and not get their churches firebombed and not do the wrong thing so that then you get attacked. I get it. It's a balancing act. Pastors run a balancing act day in and day out. I get it. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm a human being redeemed by God, and I've been saved by His grace. Because I'm a white-skinned follower of Christ doesn't equate to a secret white supremacy nut or racist. That's never been who I am. That's never been who the people I know and worship with are. I don't care where you're from. Whether you're from North Carolina, Delaware, Florida, any of those places. And I know a lot of people. I have close to 20,000 contacts in my phone. I know a lot of people. I'm sick to death of it. I'm sick to death. You want to know what else I'm sick to death of? I'm sick to death of of, uh, Democrat elected police chiefs 
white or black, crawling on the ground, walking with a mask on, identifying with the cause, getting on the knees, bending over and laying on their face, emblematic of George Floyd's murder and the injustice of it all. You don't have to do that. That's not your job. Your job is to keep the peace. Your job is to keep the people safe. You're not compensated for making political statements. Let me tell you something. If that statement would have been anything other than that, white Democrat elected Democrat police chief, you would have been vilified and you would have been fired. That's a fact. The news now is peppered with the lie that white supremacists are the violent and destructive force behind otherwise peaceful protests. That's a lie. They are liars. It's a 100% staged lie that white supremacists are behind this. And for the record, for the record, if white supremacists were behind it, you'd know it. Because the violence wouldn't be against stores and people's businesses and white people. It would be against black people and people marching with the black people. So smarten up. Stop falling for the stupid lie that's a trick to get you to look away Look away from the black people going in and breaking down, you know, and the Antifa people come with their expensive tools and they cut open the doors and they they break open the windows and then the black people go in and they take and they rob and they murder. By the way, by the way, did you happen to notice that that retired police captain that was just helping a friend out guarding the store trying to keep his pawn shop from getting looted and got murdered for his trouble? Yeah, he's a black guy. Got murdered by a black guy. Yeah, he got arrested. How often do you see his face? Here's your sign. Come on, folks. Antifa is a driving force, but make no mistake, this is primarily driven by perpetually aggrieved, constantly wailing criminal opportunists who steal and destroy their own habitat. The very place where they live, they steal and they destroy and they burn and they murder And you know what? They didn't earn or pay for it in the first place. But they burn and destroy it at the first excuse they manufacture. It's far too easy for them to steal other people's stuff. It's easy to burn people's property. Property you don't own. Property you don't pay for. It's easy for them to kill people they care nothing about. You want to talk about racism. It's about decades of injustice and institutional racism. It's about decades of injustice and institutional racism. There's never been a better opportunity for a black person, male or female in this country, than during the Trump administration. Never been a better time. Never was a worse time during Barack Obama. He stoked and he prodded and he set fires Because he's part of this. He is part of this. You'd be mad at him if you want to. I say it's a waste of your time. His time's coming. It's all about injustice and decades of injustice and institutional racism. No, it isn't. It has nothing whatsoever to do with racism or injustice. This anarchy spawns racism. It isn't because of it. I want you to examine the places where these rioters are perpetrating their terrorism. And it's not protest. Stop saying protest. Stop saying civil disobedience. News people constantly saying, constantly saying that it's civil unrest. It's not civil unrest. It's not civil disobedience. When you walk in front of, en masse, in front of cars on a highway, and you shut a highway down, no longer civil disobedience, no longer civil unrest, no longer a protest, you are committing a crime. And every single one should be locked up. States, cities, and towns in which liberal management, from the governor on down, mayor, police chief, local government, they dominate the political landscape. It's the liberal police chiefs that are getting on their knees and laying on their face with their hands behind their back, mocking like they're George Floyd. They don't have to do that. You want to know why? Because we already agree. Right? We watched the tape. We saw it happen. I thought to myself a few things I'm going to share with you. But I'm here to tell you, there's nobody, 
Nobody that I've talked to that has white skin that isn't appalled by what that man did to George Floyd. I don't care that he was getting arrested. I don't care that he passed a, a fake 20. I don't care that he has a record. I don't care about any of that. He was handcuffed. He was on his face. There were four police officers. That's where it should have stopped. He murdered him intentionally. I've already talked about it. But let's talk about this police in general thing. Police too violent? Police, they, they, they too much abuse black people? Well, does racism go only one way? Can whites only be, well, only white people can be racist. Only white people. That's it. We're the only ones. What about other originators of racism? What about other perpetrators of racism? How about other propagators of racism? You know, that's interesting that they still scream that I'm the problem. That, that, that Trump's the problem. Yet for literally decades, every position in their own police department, proudly liberal management, top to bottom. Same with Minnesota, same with New York, same with so many all across this country where the cities are burning. And you say, well, why wasn't he fired? Why wasn't he fired? Why wasn't he fired? He has such a, 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 a terrible record. Corrupt liberal police unions. They protect the officers from firing before they murder somebody without justification. They are products of a corrupt liberal ideology and practice. These unions are headed by militant, militant liberal leaders who protect those that should have been fired. But then they come out and they hail and they wail and they scream and they act like you're the one who didn't fire the guy when all the signs were there. They act like you're the one that's saying, well, he should be kept on. I think we should, I mean, we should just, you know, you can't go by a tape. We just have to watch. We just watch and see. Let me tell you something. As a former police officer and as a friend to thousands of police officers across this country, I'm going to tell you something. There ain't none of them. None of them. Look at that film and don't get sick to their stomach with anger, with disgust. Look, I'm going to tell you something. This isn't about George Floyd. This never was about George Floyd. It isn't about racism either because we're destroying a country over an exception and not the rule. What I mean there is that it's an exception that this happens. You say, well, it's all over the news. It's constantly happening. Let me tell you, I'm going to share some statistics with you that will blow your mind. And you know what? They're true because they're data. And I don't mean the stuff that comes out of the mouth of Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks and all the other hoo-hahs at the who. I'm talking about real facts, real data that you can trust. This is the exception, not the rule. But the press only shows one thing. They only show one thing. Oh, we got a white police officer that killed a black man. Let's get him. Because their news is what everybody watches. If it bleeds, it leads. Oh, and, and tell me again, how do you know it was racism? How do you know it was racism that, motiv that motivated this evil human being to murder George Floyd? Oh, don't you mean evil white man? Don't you mean evil white police officer? Hmm, that murdered poor B George Floyd? By the way, George Floyd must have been a wealthy, wealthy man to have four flipping funerals during a pandemic where you're only allowed to have 10 or so people at your funeral. No disrespect to George. I'm standing up for him. But I'm here to tell you, there's some money behind it. Why do you think they're all filming every single, every single funeral? And what are those people doing? Shoulder to shoulder. Well, we have to let them grieve. Really? Because what about all the white people in the world? All the white people in the United States of America couldn't even go see their moms or their dads or their husbands or their wives or their children. And families that can't say goodbye because we can't, well, we can't do it. It's the COVID-19. Protesting arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, screaming and shouting, bleeding. That's fine. That's fine. Because according to health, public health officials, you know, that is more important. That overshadows the risk of getting sick from COVID-19. Mm, mm, interesting. What if they were white? The madding crowds. 
arms full of televisions and liquor and sneakers and jeans. And they're shouting, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. And they're wearing the mouth with, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. You breathe fine when you bust through those windows of those stores. You bust fine. You hey, you breathing fine. You're walking fine. You seem to be all right. You don't have. You don't seem to have that fear of police that you keep telling me you have. That young black men have when they go outside. Cause well, let me tell you. And let me say something else too. You got a problem with them wearing all that riot gear, looking like riot police? That's cause they are. You know why? Because you're throwing rocks and bottles and you're shooting at them. That's why they have to wear all that gear. But you want to take it away. No police, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. I can't, I can't breathe. Now, what are they yelling? Defund the police. Defund the police. Let me tell you who a lot of these people are. They're little white kids. Still getting allowance from mom and daddy. They still get an allowance. They went to their liberal college and they paid all this money for their schooling. Got some stupid degree that will never net them a real job ever to do anything of any importance or value ever. So they got to make their worth. Because they've been indoctrinated in those colleges and their parents are going, oh my God, what did I do? And not done a day of real work in their life. So they find their purpose and their drive by destroying this country. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what color they are. They can hold up all these signs all they want. Washing the feet of a black man as a symbol. <laughs> I've been a racist. I, 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 don't, I don't perceive it. It's subconscious, but I know, I'm sure that I have at some point or another. I mean, just me, just me being able to have an iPhone. Wait a second. All them black folks running around, you see all that video? iPhones. iPhones. They got iPhones, got big screen TVs. Well, now they they got they got big screen TVs. They got iPhones. They got stairs. They they got eight hundred dollar jeans. I've never put an eight hundred dollar pair of jeans on in my lifetime. They got them because they stole them. Look, this was this was never about equality, and it was never about swiftness of justice. The murder of George Floyd was look. The murderer of George Floyd, I don't say his name either. I say it on purpose. I know what his name is. The murderer of George Floyd was rightly arrested quickly and appropriately. Now, that may be to the case's detriment. I'm just going to tell you that. Because when you rush an investigation for political expediency because you're being held hostage by a constituency that doesn't pay taxes but burns and murders their city when they don't get their way, and you rush it, you're going to make mistakes. And that's how people get off when they're clearly guilty. They're perpetually aggrieved, always lament how they're always disproportionately arrested and put into an unjust legal system that rushes to judgment and enslaves more young black men unfairly and without competent representation and investigation. They suffer. They suffer. Systematic and institutional racism. They shout it. They shout it. This is what's shouted by the, by the race baiters and the country dividers, by the race hustlers. In the case of George Floyd, he was murdered in plain view by a police officer and fellow police officers, God bless them, on the job four days. This is their field training officer that's got this man on the ground. They don't know what they can do, what they can't do. They're so new, they're afraid to do anything, but that shouldn't have stopped him. All it would have taken is one of them to bump him and go, get off his neck. Oh, you tell me to get off his neck? I'm your FTO. You won't even get through this. Okay. Let's 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 go to the let's go to the the bosses and let's tell them what you were doing was illegal and a crime and you were killing a man who, who was already handcuffed. But but you're gonna fire me. Okay. Cowards. I feel for them that they were new because I was new at one time. But they're cowards. By the way, all all minorities. Here's what I don't understand. For nine minutes. For nine minutes, that crowd of people that clearly vastly overwhelmed those four police officers stood cowardly by for nine minutes while he was being murdered on video. Their video. Because they were busy holding their cameras. 
Oh, our just society sees to it that they'll be tried by a jury. There's no doubt about it. We see what he did. We know what he did. We watched what he did, just like the people that were an arm's length away watched what he did, but they did nothing. I have to ask you some questions. Why didn't anyone stop that murderer? Why didn't anyone step in? Why didn't a crowd of four or five move forward and push him off of his neck? Why didn't any of them? None of them did it. I also have to ask, why do you assume it was a racist crime because the murderer was white, white cop even, and the victim was a black arrestee? Nobody made a move. But you, you so quick, you so quick to tell me that it's racism. It's systemic racism. It's, it's subconscious racism. It's institutional racism. You're so sure of it because he's a white guy. And a black guy was murdered. A white guy murdered a black guy. Gotta be racism. What evidence do you have that racism motivated the white officer to kill the black arrestee? Skin color? Is it skin color? So why didn't anybody interrupt the murderer in progress? I'll tell you why. Hands were full. Ooh, if I had another phone. Hands were full. This is what they're doing. The crowd said, this is what the crowd said. They didn't want to risk anything. They didn't want to risk anything to save this man's life. Meanwhile, cops are supposed to risk their lives every day. Every day. Go to work every day. Don't know if you're coming home. Meanwhile, you tell me. You tell me you deserve better. Okay. But you did nothing. Were you afraid of the police? You don't seem afraid of them now. There are thousands of police on the street now. Not afraid of them. They got the riot gear on. You're not afraid of them. The crowd's response was because the police officers threatened to pepper spray us. This is what they were asked. Yet you'll go riot and burn and murder amidst clouds of of, uh, tear gas and pepper spray and rubber bullets. Okay. George Floyd's murder is worth it to you to destroy our entire country and your own cities where you live. But George Floyd, hey, you tell me Black Lives Matter, George Floyd's life wasn't worth some red watery eyes, some stinging eyes for you for 45 minutes. A bunch of virtue signaling 20-something white, still living off an allowance from their parents, people terrified of being labeled a racist. They're running around posting comments about the institutional racism fomenting civil unrest because maybe they think, this is what I think they think. I really believe this. I think... I think, I believe that they hope. This is what this is what I believe. No, I know it. I I shouldn't even say I believe it or I hope it. Or I believe it. I know it. They believe these these crazy white people believe that the rioting and murdering mob is going to read their apologetic, subservient, subconsciously racism admitting, uh righteously indignant social media posts and skip over them without killing them. Like the pain on the door at Passover. That's what they think. Miss Robbie, you're right. The one who posted on Facebook should also be arrested for murder because that guy that was murdered, uh, Arbery, down in, in um, Georgia, Georgia, was it Georgia? He was murdered. That's on video. The guy that videoed was in a pickup truck behind him. He saw it happen. He videoed it. He's a, he's being charged with murder. Charge every one of those fools holding a camera with murder. Why is it this guy doesn't... He he gets charged with murder, this guy down there. He didn't participate in it. He had nothing to do with it. He had nothing to do with it. But he got charged with murder. His life is ruined. Ruined. Why aren't all these people charged with murder? You know what? They won't skip over you, righteously indignant social justice warriors. They won't and they don't. Antifa is a terrorist organization funded by the left, but then again, so is Black Lives Matter. I, I, you, maybe you should read what their own manif- manifesto of core values and beliefs are before you put Black Lives Matter on your, on your page. You put it up in the corner, the profile picture, because you're showing you're down with the struggle. Hey, don't be mad at me. I mean, I'm not telling all your friends, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not a racist. 
telling yourself and you're telling the other people and everybody, but you know they're not racist, your friends, because you've never seen them do a racist thing in their lives and you've never done a racist thing in your life, well, other than being born white. You know, I got to tell you something. I've been in situations similar to this before. The same self-oppressed, white guilt-ridden, virtue-signaling, useful idiots march and kneel and scream, No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Defund police now. What do we want? Defund the police. When do we want it? Now. They're the first to take a victim's, what, who, me? Posture when the police interrupt their destruction. When the police officer comes up. That dumb white dude, you know, the 75-year-old guy, Listen, Buffalo doesn't deserve a police department if you're going to fire a guy for that. You don't, Buffalo, you don't deserve a police department. Every single one of their ERT, their SWAT team, resigned. Good for them. Good for them. The whole police department ought to just, okay, good luck. Good luck with this city thing. Good luck with this crime thing. We're just going to take a walk because you clearly don't have our back. Because that person didn't do a, that police officer didn't do one thing wrong. Not one thing wrong. That's how you advance on a crowd. That guy broke the lines and came at them. They don't show the whole video because they want you to be mad because mad is what sells. But mad is also what burns cities. That's another piece of strategy. They know the media supports them by showing only the police responding to the rioters' violence against them. They don't, they don't show the violence done again. They don't show the cop. They don't show the horse. They don't show all these things happening. The bricks hitting them in the head, knocking them out. They don't show the, the uh, caustic fluids that they're spraying on them. They don't, they don't show it. They don't show the Molotov cocktails. You know what a Molotov cocktail is? It's a bottle of gasoline with a rag sticking out of it that they light and they throw. And when it hits you on the head, spreads the gas all over you and catches you on fire. They don't show any of that. Scores of police officers, scores, hundreds of police officers across the United States are severely injured because of all this stupid mess. They don't show that. They don't show that. They're not going to show that. In every profession, you have bad hires or hires gone wrong. They started off good, but they turned wrong. Their resume looked good, but they turned wrong. It's in every company's best interest, no matter what company you are, no matter what you sell or what you do, to weed out the bad but you know what? Political correctness keeps bad people employed when they should have long since been fired. Political correctness causes the loss of jobs of good people and it keeps people on jobs like this evil piece of crap murderer that murdered George Floyd in plain sight of a crowd of lazy, cowardly onlookers only a few feet away. Law enforcement hates bad officers. I'm here to tell you. Nobody hates a bad cop more than good cops. And I'm going to tell you something. I serve with some great police officers. I serve with some incredible people. I also serve with a few that were racist. And you know what? They weren't white. And they never got fired. And they always got promoted. And they always got shielded from their bad activity. I'm not saying that only them. Only black police officers were racist, but I'm telling you, the only ones that I ever saw were white. And here's the crazy thing. Some of them would, would, would uh, bust on and, and bully other black police officers because they weren't black enough. They'd bust on them and bully them because they weren't down with the struggle. My fellow police officers, the guys I work with and the ladies I work with, they busted their hump every day. Every day. The risk that gets assumed the second you put on your badge and your gun and your uniform is astronomical. It's astronomical. The stressors involved with being a police officer because you're no longer just a police officer. You have to be, you have to be a social justice uh, expert. You have to be a psychological uh, master at, at de-escalation. You have to be able to create an illusion of safety and peace while not appearing to be over-brooding and overburdening the people who call you the most. 88% of all police calls come from these neighborhoods that they set on fire. But when you get there, when all the police shootings happen, and you get there, guess what they say? You say, hey, did anybody see anything? Because you're seeing 150 people out, because they never seem to have any place to go. Did anybody see anything? Did anybody see who did this? Nope. Nope. F the police, man. 
That's how it works. You don't think so, but it's how it's works. Hey, hey, you're a white social justice warrior? You want, you want to be a social justice warrior? Tell you what, if you qualify, let's get you in a police car for 30 days. Let's have you do 30 days in a police car. Let's have you do all the shifts. Let's do it. Let's do it. No, you won't do it. You won't do it because you're a coward. Because you want to not know. Law enforcement despises black, bad officers. The 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 uh, the black ones and the white ones and the and the and the purple ones and every other color. They despise them, and they want them out. Ninety nine percent, and I can tell you this because I know it because I lived it. Ninety nine percent of police officers are phenomenal human beings, and they have to wade through all the crap. That society puts in front of them. The society takers, the takers, the stealers, the perpetually aggrieved, the failed, and the worst among us to create the illusion of safety and security to the producers and the contributors of society. They have to wait. You have to wait. We're busy over here. We're busy handling the business in this community that we've been to a hundred times tonight. We're busy going back to the same places. Oh, there's a shooting. We got to go in there and deal with a shooting. Anybody see anything? Nope. Oh, gang fight? Beat the guy almost to death? Anybody see anything? Nope. Okay. All right. Okie dokie. Drug dealers on the corner. Of every color. Anybody see anything? Nope. What did the guy look like? No, I'm, I'm man. F, F the police, man. And let me tell you something. I said a second ago, the illusion of safety. It is an illusion, and you're seeing that perceived safety and civility torn away. You're seeing that veil of the thought of safety torn away. There's more of them than there are of us. And every police officer knows it when they get into that cruiser, when they get on that police bike or that horse or that motorcycle or on foot. Every single one knows at any point in time, if these people turn on me, I'm done. Because I can't shoot them. I can't pepper spray them because I get fired. You barely, you barely can't even say anything to them. My goodness, you can't even push them back when they're coming up on you. Because you'll get fired. Look, the people committing these crimes, they're not producers. They don't produce anything in this world. There's nothing of value coming from these people. They are destroyers. And here's a little fact for you. They're your neighbors. Oh yeah, they're your neighbors. They're the people that you bump up against in the grocery. They're the people that are at the car wash. They're the people that that at the sports events are sitting in the stands. They're right there with you. Oh, but they're the ones that are going to hurl bricks and Molotov cocktails and set your business on fire. These people burning and stealing and murdering, they aren't contributing members of society who are angry about injustice. No, they are perpetual takers. They are perpetual users. And they are perpetual excuse makers for their lameness in life. George Floyd should have never been killed, especially in front of three other officers and a crowd of street corner YouTube hopefuls. What that officer did disgusts me. And I've said it about nine times just in this one Facebook Live. Take it for what it is, because I mean it. Look, on that the fact that we're disgusted by what he did, the fact that we, what he did to George Floyd, the fact that we want justice and justice is being done, the wheels of justice are spinning. On that, we all agree. We have been repeatedly clear. His murder was swiftly investigated and charged. Swiftly. No justice, no peace. It isn't justice these mobs seek. It isn't peace either. Learn something about the crime data. Learn something about the epididium epididymiology of criminals and victims. Know the actual makeup of crime statistics and victim statistics before you speak. You won't like it because it's a long-standing unpopular truth that whites and blacks are too fr- they're too afraid. They're too chicken to say it out loud. Number of unarmed black men killed by police last year. This is in one locality. 9. Number of unarmed white men killed by police last year. 19. Number of police killed last year. 89. 89. Of 500,000 black versus white, white versus black violent felonies, non-homicide, 85% are black perpetrators with a white victim. 80. This is National Institute of Justice data. This is FBI crime statistics 
data. It's not me making it up. It's the truth. 85% are black perpetrators with a white victim. 500 whites are killed by blacks. 250 blacks are killed by whites. Of 1,000 people killed by police officers, 6% are white cop, unarmed black man. Cops kill as many unarmed whites as unarmed blacks. Murder of blacks and whites in the United States, this is 2013. And the numbers are much bolder now. Per 1 million members of the murderer's race, 9.83 whites killed by blacks. 0.77, not even 1%, blacks killed by whites. 10.22 whites killed by whites. And then 53.94 Blacks killed by blacks. 2013, FBI crime report, expanded homicide data table number six. Black lives matter, and they're complaining about this number. 0.77, blacks killed by whites. Last weekend, in one city alone, Chicago, Illinois, more black people killed more black people than white cops killed in an entire year. They did it. In one weekend. Now you need to know the unpopular, politically incorrect truth has been stoked and fueled since 2008 before you spout off the tired line of race baiting actors and, 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 and race hustlers. That's all they're doing is hustling race. Until people deal with the facts like that, no matter how good anyone makes it for the bad actors, until they make it better for themselves at the family level, the community level will always beget this result. Among the constant accusations and assumptions of racism among white American taxpayers with no responsibility for the crimes and destruction that emerge in these communities will emerge righteously indignant, the righteously indignant demand that we have to all clean it up for them and pay for it. Hard no. Hard pass. I'm done paying over and over. I'm done paying. I'm done going back in saying, well, you know, this is terrible what happened. Here, this is terrible what happened in Ferguson. This is terrible what happened in Detroit. This is terrible what happened in L.A. This is terrible what happened in Minneapolis. This is terrible what happened in New York. This is terrible what happened in Chicago. I'm done. Hard no, hard pass. I'm not paying to build, rebuild your crap anymore. And here's something for you. It just came out today. Chicago's mayor has been begging, been on the phone begging, Some of the largest retailers and stores in Chicago, please come back. They said no. They said, we've been in Chicago for a hundred years. We've had enough of this. We're finished. We're not coming back. We will go somewhere else where the police and the politicians protect us and protect our livelihood and the jobs of people you claim to care about. Here's a note to yourself. Take a look around the cities where all this is happening. We've cleaned it up. We've cleaned it all up. We've rebuilt it all nicer and better than before. Time and time again. And we've always paid for it. We always have. Here's another note for yourself. Write this in ink. We're finished paying. You don't want police? Okay. You want to defund the only thing providing even a modicum of protection for you? Okay. We will take back the tax dollars. We're going to take back the tax dollars that we pay. Disproportionately, by the way. And we'll use our own money to protect ourselves. We're going to use our own money to protect ourselves from you. We won't be held to the constraints the police are, by the way. You know what? The police are held to rule after rule after rule and the scrutiny of every, every little camera that somebody's got on their phone. Scrutiny that is unfairly applied. Criticism that's unfairly applied. This, in this case, this guy deserved it. Absolutely. By the way, the two men that murdered Ahmed Arbery down in Georgia, they weren't police officers. You can say, well, they were police officers. He was a police officer. He's very connected. He's not a police officer. They were two people, two grown men, who decided they were going to chase down a guy because they thought he was breaking into a house, whether he was or he wasn't, is immaterial. And they chased him down. They tried to detain him. And they shot him dead in the street. They should spend the rest of their lives, if not more, in jail. But if you're not going to put 
that throng of people four feet away and five feet away from the police officer murdering George Floyd, you're not going to put them in jail for murder for instead of doing something. They sat here with their camera on their phone. If you're not going to charge them, you better drop the charges against the man because he had nothing to do with it. Nothing whatsoever. Oh, you don't want police. Okay. Okay. That's fine. We're going to take our tax money back. All those hundreds of millions and billions of dollars that go to the police departments, that funding everything that it costs to fund one police officer, we're taking it all back. We're going to use that money. And we won't have the rules imposed on us like they do. We won't be held to the constraints that police are. No, no. You better, you better be real careful what you wish for, folks. No police, no peace. No police, no peace. No police, there will be no peace. I'm out.